Hello and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. Today we are looking at controlling rate of a reaction. So I've done a separate video on collision theory and reaction pathways that you can check out if you want some more background on how the reactions proceed etc. So in this video we're only going to focus on the factors that affect the rate of a reaction and then we'll look at the relative rate calculations afterwards as well. So when you're talking about controlling the rate at higher chemistry it's always important to relate the change back to how it's affected the number of successful collisions. So National 5 we talked about collisions um, but in higher we need to focus on whether those collisions will actually be successful or not because it's the only only the successful collisions that will actually increase the rate. So there are two requirements for a successful collision. I'll talk about these a bit more in my collision theory video, but the, those requirements are that the particles must collide with sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy and the particles must collide with the correct geometry. So if we're looking at then the factors that affect the rate for particle size, if we have larger particles then we have a smaller surface area. Smaller surface area means there's not as much area exposed for collisions to take place so therefore, the number of successful collisions you get will go down, which means the rate will go down. Smaller particles have a larger surface area, so that means that we will have more successful collisions and then therefore an increased reaction rate. For concentration, if you have a higher concentration, you've got a greater number of particles, which therefore means that you'll have a greater number of successful collisions just because of probability and therefore an increased rate. Okay, and then the opposite is true for a lower concentration. Temperature is a bit different though. So when we're increasing the temperature or decreasing the temperature, what we're doing is changing the amount of energy the particles have. So if we have a higher temperature, more particles will have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy because a higher temperature gives the particles more kinetic energy. So if more particles have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy and that means your number of successful collisions are also going to go up which means your rate is going to go up. If you have a lower temperature less particles have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy so then therefore we get a decreased number of successful collisions and therefore a decreased rate. Okay so when it comes to particle size and concentration it's more to do with how likely the particles are to collide with each other when it comes to temperature, it's more to do with how many of those particles will actually have energy to overcome the activation energy, which is the energy we need for this reaction to proceed. But for every single one of them, we relate it back to how it affects the number of successful collisions when we're explaining the effect that factor has on the rate. So now we're going to continue with temperature a little bit and we're going to look at these energy or kinetic energy distribution curves that you quite often see. So these curves can be a bit confusing at first until you get your head around them, but the easiest way to think of them is like piles of sand, okay, because the area underneath the curve is, curve is representing how many molecules you have. So if you've got a larger area underneath your curve, that means you've got more molecules present. Okay, so when we are adjusting these curves to show a change in temperature, we need to try and make sure that we're not making the curve have a bigger area underneath it that is staying the same. Because if we make it a bigger area, then we're essentially adding more particles. So, like I said, temperature, um, an increase in temperature will give the particles more kinetic energy. So temperature is really just a measure of average kinetic energy of a system. So the higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy is for all your molecules within that reaction. So if we start off, this is like it's, it's like an example of a curve that would be at temperature that's 30 degrees. Okay, I've also put on the activation energy in line here. And basically what this means is that any of the particles in this area here have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy and form an activated complex. Okay, they still, however, need to collide with the correct geometry. So it's not to say that every particle in this area is going to form products. Um, they have sufficient energy to do so, but they also need to collide with the correct geometry as well. Okay, so these particles here all have sufficient energy to overcome 
the activation energy. So they can cause a successful collision provided they collide with the correct geometry as well. If we then increase the temperature to 50 degrees, what happens is the average kinetic energy of the system is going to shift. So like I said, think of it as a pile of sand and when you increase the temperature, what you're doing is pushing your pile of sand over. So it would go, that's not really hanging. So it would go something like that maybe. Okay, so I've just pushed the pile of sand over. As long as the curve, the peak of the curve is to the right and lower than this one, that's fine. If we decrease the temperature, then it's like pushing your pile of sand up and back the way to the left. So we could draw something like that. Okay, and what you can see is that the area that's past the activation energy gets smaller when the temperature is lower and increases when the temperature is higher. Okay, and that's why a change in small change in temperature can have a massive difference on the rate of a reaction because even a small change in temperature can result in a lot more or a lot less particles having sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy. So my advice when looking at these sorts of graphs, think of them as piles of sand. If you're increasing the temperature, it gets pushed over to the right. If you're decreasing the temperature, it gets pushed up to the left. And try and keep the area underneath the curves roughly the same. If we then look at catalysts, so we all know that catalysts increase the rate of reaction. In the higher though, we need to know how a bit more detail on how it does that. So they increase the rate by lowering the activation energy. So the energy needed to, for the reaction to proceed becomes lower. Um, and I've shown how that is drawn on a reaction pathway diagram in my collision theory reaction pathways video. So you can check that out if you need to. So the activation energy is lowered, which means more particles will have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy, which then means that you're going to have an increased number of successful collisions because there's more particles able that have the energy to collide successfully. The way that they lower the activation energy is by providing an alternative route. So they temporarily make bonds with the reactants to form different intermediates that are lower in energy. And then once the products are formed, the catalysts sort of detach themselves. So they're not used up or chemically changed during the reaction, which is what makes them different from a reactant. When we look at the kinetic energy diagrams for in the relation to catalysts, what happens is because the catalyst is lowering the activation energy, if I was going to draw a line on here to show how the activation energy changes adding a catalyst, all I would have to do is move that activation energy line back towards the left, showing that it's lower in energy. So as you can see, by lowering the activation energy, there's a larger number of molecules that now have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy and form an activated complex. So that's how they speed up the reaction. Quite often, when they're asking questions about catalysts, they'll, um, in multiple choice, they'll put in a possible answer that involves the catalyst giving the particles more energy, that doesn't happen. The only thing that can give the particles more energy is increasing the temperature. So catalysts can lower the amount of energy the particles need to overcome the activation energy, but it doesn't give them more energy. So it just drops that energy hill for them. So just watch out for that one. So to finish off, let's have a look at relative rate calculations. So it's very straightforward and the equation is in the front of the data booklet for you. So to work out the relative rate, you just do one divided by the time the reaction took in seconds, and it must be in seconds, which means that your relative rate is always per second, S minus one. Quite often though, you will be asked to calculate the reaction time from the relative rate, and in that case, it's again still one divided, but this time it's one divided by the relative rate per second. So your time will come out as seconds. So it doesn't matter which way you're asked to deal with relative rate, it's always going to be one divided by whatever number you're given. Okay. When we then plot relative rate for um, the effect of concentration and temperature, we get two different relationships. So concentration um, usually affects rate via a linear relationship so that's like if you um, double the concentration you would usually double the rate 
in advance hire you would learn that there are some um, exceptions to that rule but as far as hire chemistry is concerned it's a linear relationship when it comes to temperature affecting rate it's an exponential relationship so we get this steep curve where it gets to the point that a small difference in temperature can cause a large increase in rate and I kind of touched on that previously um, with the kinetic energy distribution diagrams you can see that a shift in temperature causes a lot more particles to have the energy above the activation energy to successfully collide. Okay so it's just so you're aware of the names of those two types of relationships. And then lastly just going to talk about a couple of things that quite often come up in relation to designing rate experiments. So if you're doing an experiment to investigate the effect of concentration, you need to make sure that your beakers or whatever you're doing the reaction in are dry before you add in the solutions. And this is because if it's not dry, it could be diluted, which would therefore give you an accurate reaction time because you're going to have an inaccurate concentration. When it comes to looking at the effect of concentration as well, we don't necessarily need to know the exact concentrations. We can actually do it by just adding more water each time, provided the total volume is kept constant. So sometimes you'll get asked to complete tables, um, filling in how much water you should add to a given volume of your reactant in order to alter the concentration. So as long as all your solutions total up to the same total volume, then they are still comparable and it's still a fair experiment. So, for example, your first experiment could have 50 centimetres cubed of your reactant, the second one could be 40 centimetres cubed plus 10 centimetres cubed of water, and then it would be 30 centimetres cubed of your reactant plus 20 centimetres cubed of water. So the whole time they're adding up to 50 centimetres cubed total volume, but there's increasing amounts of water, which means the concentration is going to decrease. Okay. In terms of investigating the effect of temperature, a hot water bath would give more accurate results because it's a more accurate and controlled heating method when compared to a Bunsen burner. Um, but that's the only thing that really tends to come up for the effect of temperature in terms of how the experiment, the experimental design could be better. Okay. Um, in terms of monitoring the rate, uh, you could collect volumes of gases record the total volume of gas or if it's a colour changing reaction and um, just make sure you put it on a white tile so you can see the colour change more clearly and get to give an accurate more accurate reaction time um, but that's the the types of reactions that you'll usually be monitoring in the hire so i hope that was helpful if you found it useful please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you again soon